Hello everyone, how's it going? In the last video, we talked about periodic trends, atomic properties, and different factors that might affect the valence shell of electrons and the formation of ions, such as cations that are positively charged and aions that are negatively charged. Some of the properties we talked about were like ionization energy, the energy required to rip an electron off of an atom and form a cation. We know that the stronger the nuclear charge, the harder it is, the more energy is required to rip that electron off. We talked about electron affinity, kind of the opposite. What happens to the energetics of an atom when an electron is added to the valence shell? We learned that the more electrons in the valence shell, the more favorable it is to add an electron. So we can tell a handful of properties that truly impact these factors, such as what period the atom is in, how strong the nuclear charge is, and how many electrons do they have filling their valence shell. We know that within the same period, as we go from left to right in the periodic table, we're increasing in the number of electrons in the valence shell and the nuclear charge. We know that atoms in the left-hand side of the periodic table have weaker nuclear charges than those in the right-hand side. We also know that they have less electrons in their valence shell, sometimes one or two. So these atoms would be more acceptable to having lower ionization energies. We call these atoms metals. So to the left-hand side of the periodic table, we have our metals. To the right-hand side, we have atoms with stronger nuclear charges, more electrons in the valence shell, and favorable electron affinity, because when an electron gets added, they actually stabilize. There are definitely a handful of other properties we can talk about about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, a group that divides the two. But throughout this video, I just want to focus on the properties of metals, that the fact that they have low ionization energies, and that nonmetals have favorable electron affinities to talk about ionic bonding, the bond between metals and nonmetals. Moving on to the details of ionic bonding, I just want to mention that having a full valence shell of electrons is actually stabilizing. This is the reason why atoms will have favorable electron affinities, because adding that last electron actually stabilizes them. So atoms like lithium are willing to give up that last electron to have a filled valence shell, in this case have a filled 1s valence shell, a lot like helium's. The point that atoms at the extreme ends, way to the left and way to the right in the periodic table, never appear in their elemental forms because they're so willing to rip an electron off and form an aion or give up an electron and form a cation. This is not including the noble gases, so atoms like halogens appear as aions in their natural state. and. Alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals are cations in nature. So we have a group of atoms, metals, that want to form a cation. They're willing to give up an electron. And we have a group of atoms, let's say the halogens, that want to accept an electron and form an aion. So this is the basis of ionic bonding. The metal is going to give up an electron and the non-metal is going to accept it. Then, we have a cation and an aion. They have strong opposite opposing charges that are going to attract one another, and this is how we form an ionic bond. It's an electrostatic attraction between a cation and an aion. So, let's put it in perspective. A lithium wants to give up its one electron, so it can have a filled 1s orbital and an empty 2s orbital. It's going to donate that one electron to fluorine to fill its two energy level by filling the two P, since it only requires one more electron. By doing so, a lithium is going to form a lithium cation, and fluorine is going to form a fluorine aion. And like two magnets, they're going to attract each other and form a strong ionic bond. If you've ever had multiple magnets, you can see that just because two magnets are bonded or stuck together, they can't attract other magnets too. 
This is the same principle for ions, because an ion has a permanent charge, meaning that that charge is a characteristic of that ion. So, if we have multiple sodium and multiple chlorine ions, they're going to form a lattice structure. This is what table salt is. Table salt is the lattice structure of the repeating ionic bonds between sodium and chlorine, and it's an ionic bond. This is what we call sodium chloride. The nomenclature of ionic bonding is that you name the metal first, the element, so sodium. But when it comes to the non-metal, you change the ending of the word with I-D-E. So we have sodium chloride. In some cases, when we use transition metals, they have varying different ions that they can form. So we use Roman numerals to help represent the cation charge of the metal. So for like iron three chloride or lead two oxide. There's one more factor I wanna talk about, about ionic bonding. There's a reason why sodium fluoride is a stronger ionic bond than sodium chloride, and it's because of atomic radius. The of atomic size, as we saw in the last video, decreases as we go from left to right of the periodic table and increases as we go down. The smaller the ions are, the more concentrated their permanent charge is. So the smaller the two ions are, the stronger the ionic bond between them. The larger the ion, the more distributed the charge is. Another factor that influences the strength of an ion is the value of that charge. Something can have a two positive charge versus something like sodium that has a single positive charge. So the greater number of positive charge, the stronger the ion. So well, that kind of wraps it up for ionic bonding, at least its introduction. I hope this video helped you understand the fundamentals that lead into ionic bonding. In the next video, we're going to talk about covalent bonding. Remember, all the infographics you see me use throughout this video are for free download on my website. Hope it helps and have a great day.